Hi, sorry. This sounds strange, but I just walked past and you had full style, smiling. Thank you. I thought I should say hi. I'm waiting for some friends. For... Some friends? Yeah, kind of. Is boyfriend or some friends or mix? Used to be. Your ex-boyfriend? <laughs> yeah. Are you nervous? No, I'm not. <laughs> Why? <It's, laughs> all the feelings are gone. Yeah. It's just friends now. Not at all, but yeah. <laughs> what, what do you mean? I'm not lying. <laughs> I, I'm confused. What is the deal? Why, why are we talking? I don't know. It's just so funny. <laughs> like, I love meeting strangers and then um, tapping into their world a little bit like this. So, you are going here in Barcelona talking to some girls, like. To you right now, yes. <laughs> when I was in my early 20s, I didn't really go out at all. So, I was never in clubs, I was never in bars. And that way, the only times to meet women was in class, which was usually a more of a friendly setting, and at house parties. I remember I was invited to that house party by, you know, school colleagues of mine, and I knew that there would be this girl there. And it was in Vienna, so okay, the Saturday night comes up, I'm wondering, okay, what should I dress like? Not that I would have a sense of style back then anyway. And I was a bit nervous, because I was like, oh, you know, this girl is gonna be there. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna say? How can I get her attention? I go to the house party after having a bunch of drinks at home with my friends. You know, obviously you, in that age, you're in a habit of whenever you do something social, you first need to get a little bit drunk to have some courage. I go to the party, she's there. Let's call her Sabrina for this video. Sabrina is there and the whole night for me mentally evolves around Sabrina. What is she thinking? In what room is she? Who is she talking to? What did she just tell me? Did I make the right move? Did I do a weird zip out of my drink? Um, did I stand up in a weird position? Did I spend too much time on the toilet? What is she thinking? What is she doing? It's first of all a very stressful situation to be in. Maybe you've been in the same situation. As the night progresses, I didn't really make a lot of progress in interacting with Sabrina, in getting closer to Sabrina and by far not seducing Sabrina. The reality is she ended up cuddling some guy on the couch which pissed me off um this is like weird mixture of disgust and jealousy and disappointment and rage at myself and you know yeah just being disappointed that i don't have the skills that are required to manifest a girl like that into my life to i say it easily to just talk to her that's not the only time that that happened i often had the experience where i'm like so obsessed with one girl and then suddenly all my thoughts evolve around her guys guys there is nadia and she just looked at me she just looked at me well why don't you go talk to her yeah you're right kev i, I should just i should just go talk to her <laughs> yeah i could do that sure sure <clears throat> what is she thinking about how can i get her attention who is this guy next to her? Does she have a boyfriend? What does she think about me? Did I f this up? What does she really like? What can I do? Da 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 da. It's so focused on one person. If you feel the same way, I totally understand you, right? I've been in this situation probably for a good part of like 10 years of my life that I was having these mindsets, these thoughts, these, you know, cycles and, and thought patterns. It took me a while to get out of it. I guess it's normal to be in a situation like that where you're socially not so calibrated, mainly if you don't have a male father figure, if you didn't have proper balanced social circles growing up, you know, for me, for sure, I grew up with a lot of guys. I didn't have like sisters or female cousins and I spent the years of 15 to 20 in an all male school. So I lacked experiences, I lacked abundance, I lacked female energy in my life. And in general, I was just a nice guy. I had nice guy syndrome and maybe you have too. Maybe you can resonate with these patterns. It's normal to get fixated on one girl if you are in that position, if you lack that male figure, if you lack that, you know, vibrant social circle full of female energy. The problem then becomes that every time there are women around, there is a little bit of pressure, right? Maybe you can feel that. I remember it clearly. Every time there would be hot women in a circle, it's suddenly the pressure is on. Oh my God, am I doing the right thing? Oh, here's my chance. Oh, I'm gonna fuck it up again. And naturally, you don't wanna find yourself that much in these situations anymore. I know I didn't. I just didn't go out that much. I didn't 
actively seek social circles with women at all because it was just too stressful. Which means, what's the opposite? Well, social circles with men. I would play computer games. I would just meet up only dudes. I would do pre-drinkings, you know, drinking beers uh, only with guys. I would play soccer a lot, do a lot of like male sports kind of stuff. Okay, not so bad. But if that's all you do, that's a problem. It becomes your new comfort zone. And I spent a long time in that mindset. Weeks go by, months go by, years go by without you truly having females in your life. I see that with the students I'm coaching these days. They come to the workshop, they come to the workshop and you know, some guys are in their 20s. That's great, they realized, let's do something about this in their 20s. But to be honest, most guys I work with are in their 30s, 40s, 50s. That doesn't mean it's too late to change something, but the regret these guys have in their eyes is clear. They clearly understand, damn, I wish I would have done something earlier about this. So what's the solution? I mean, these days I'm way more relaxed around social situations. And I basically, if I could pin it down to one thing, I overcame the anxiety to make a move. To not just be passive, to not just sit on the couch and, you know, hoping a girl would sit down next to me or just observing or being the interesting guy who like, once a girl talks to me once, I can, you know, share interesting stories and show how smart I am. And that's how I'm going to reel her in. No. I'm finally in a position where I can make a move. How did I get there? Well, of course, I could give you the bullshit, normal, standard, in a box YouTube advice. I am dead inside. Just be confident. It's Britney, bitch. Learn certain conversation frameworks, study other men with charisma and emulate them, or get really rich, work on your looks, you know, looks maxing, six pack, and, and, and train really hard and you will like, triple your testosterone and that will just draw women in they will like you know through hormones and pheromones they will smell your testosterone levels and then suddenly that's all you gotta do they will just draw into you like a magnet and you don't need to actually do anything anymore from that point on it helps but let's be honest even if you're jacked rich you look good and you have high testosterone levels inside of you there's still this little boy that doesn't know what to do, that still feels overwhelmed, that still feels anxious thinking about making a move. So what I did is therapy. And I don't mean the sitting down therapy with a therapist where you talk about your feelings and thoughts, which is a great thing, by the way. I'm also doing that now. But back then I did shock therapy, action therapy, which basically means I started talking to them. And it wasn't easy. I needed support. I needed a brotherhood. I needed mentors to do it. But once I got started, I approached hundreds and hundreds of women. Then I created social events myself, you know, and I learned different dynamics and different situations. So imagine you would approach even just 10 new girls a week, right? It's not a lot if you think about it. I mean, my morning routine is basically getting up and getting a coffee, which is involves like 30 minutes of walking. Usually I see between three and six attractive girls every day on that walk. So if you approach one or two a day, that's 500 new interactions you have every year. And considering maybe, you know, 20, 30% of these would give you your number and respond to the first text, that's 100 to 150 new women in your life that you're interacting with. That means dozens of dates. And on the dates, obviously you learn much more and then, you know, the date leads to the bedroom and then you become sexually more confident and so on. Imagine what that would do to your social life. Imagine having that level of access suddenly. How much would you have to swipe on Tinder to go on like 27 dates? You know, it's like insane. I've, I'm using Tinder occasionally when I arrive in a new country. And you know, I think I have good pictures. I'm not a bad looking guy. I have a cool lifestyle and I'm still getting dog shit results on Tinder versus me just getting my coffee, saying hi to two girls on the way, telling them they're beautiful and, you know, getting a little bit into a conversation and then closing their Instagram or WhatsApp, I'm getting way better results. And, and let's keep the results aside for a bit. Mainly it changes the energy that I have around women and that you can too. They can sense the abundance. They can sense that you're more comfortable, that you talked to a bunch of girls 
and that you're not as needy. Being needy is really not attractive to any woman for that part. This is actually then how you overcome that also anxiety to make a move, right? You're gonna be more relaxed in the moment. You're gonna have more experience, which makes you more confident, which makes you care less if you do get laid on, I don't know, that particular house party, or if you gonna have something with that one particular girl, which paradoxically makes it way more likely that you will have success with that one girl. And if you build that foundation of having the experience of approaching a lot of women, having the confidence to walk up to someone, being able to have an interesting conversation, you know, obviously like a cold approach on the street during daylight involves a bunch of things. Social freedom, communication skills. You got some balls, you know, being able to like close a girl, get her number, then text a little bit. So obviously there's a bunch of skills combined in there. Let's call that the base. On that you can build. So what I did is, as I mentioned, I started creating my own house parties. Suddenly I'm the leader, right? Which already puts me in a different position. Then I thought, okay, I am charming one-on-one -on -one now and I am charming one in a party setting, but what about online? All these girls are swiping online all day long. They spend hours on Instagram, not just these girls, you know, like people in general, people spend time on their phones, yes. Oh my fucking God. I should be online. I should be in their phones through my social media profile. So I focused a lot on representing myself, my my archetype, my ideas, my humor, my style, just my way of being in, re in real life, also on social media. And that became really successful because now a girl who meets me at a party for two minutes, on the street for three minutes, suddenly she can look at me, you know, my stories, my posts, several times a week because I'm posting or I'm not posting, she's just checking in or somebody else tags me and we have common friends. So suddenly I exist for her, not only these few minutes when we're actually interacting in the real world, but I'm also reminding her that I exist uh, multiple times a week or a month or whatever. And then the next time we see each other in real life, there's more familiarity again. She knows me, she feels comfortable with me and I can escalate things way easier and faster. So this is kind of like a trifactor of cold approach, meeting people, uh, creating social events, being social in general, being you know, the guy who makes shit happen in that and a strong social media profile, it literally like 100 X as you're dating. There's some things to think about. Let me know. That's just a few ideas I wanted to share. Keep in mind, you are just one approach away from something magical happening in your life. There is opportunity out there. I see it every day. Every day when I get my coffee, I'm like, there's a cute girl and she probably would like me to approach her because I've proved it over and over again. And I've proved it over and over again with the students I'm coaching. You know, in cities like Budapest, Barcelona, New York, the cities where I'm doing one-on-one uh, -on -one workshops, there's thousands of girls out there who wanna be approached in a strong, respectful way. They love it. I'm hearing it on the microphones over and over again. So opportunity is out there and it's for you to decide to take action. If you like this topic, I have a whole book on the five elements of dating success, where I'm going more into depth about what does actually work with women, what they actually like, what you should focus on if you wanna have a more successful dating life. So if you wanna read about that, it's free currently for free. I don't know if it's for free forever. You can click below and yeah, let me know what you think. See you in the next one.